year. That's because he hasn't come through their own domestic qualifying to get here. It's not like tennis where you just, it's, your, it's individual. You make your own uh, applications and you join. As we now pick it up at the beginning, best of three sets, best of three games, this Conica Cup men's out the final. And Arby starts it off by going cross court with the smash. Taltic. Slow starter trailed Peter Gator early and often before pulling that one out in three games. The great feature, I think, of this matchup, I mean, he's got wonderful jump smashes, uh, Arby, whether or not he can uh, keep doing it for three games. That's uh, one factor, but really the more uh, interesting element is what the young man this side of the uh, net does, Torfik, just an unbelievably talented uh, youngster. I think every time he gets on the court, he's going to improve. I saw him for the first time yesterday, and uh, was the first thing that impressed me was how economically he moved around the court. His court coverage is absolutely sensational. At the end of uh, three hard games, he was not breathing heavily at all. And that's testament to his mobility and his anticipation. He's the one that tends to stand in the middle of the court and dictate the play. He saw Arby going wide. Arby in an interview yesterday admitted that he had never played Talpik and wasn't quite sure what to expect. Here the youngster serves still at Love All. That goes wide. But it dropped in. Arby didn't have a play on it. So both gentlemen just feeling the other out. That misses. Just couldn't quite find the T in the far corner. Shot caught the tape, fell on Arby's side. There's that quick smash. Arby didn't have to jump for that one. Just off the back foot. Ooh, I don't know. No. I'm looking uh, pretty well down the line. I thought he actually caught the line. No argument, though, from Taufik. No, he, he did gesture with his left hand, but uh, exactly as he responded yesterday in Peter Gator's match, there were a couple of dodgy line calls there. Uh, too close to line. Arby forced to make a play on it. Miss hit on the return. Uh, the interesting thing with line calls in, in badminton, I mean, any sort of uh, questioning of calls is almost uh, tantamount to sedition. You know, Hingis, well, even in the modern day, you know, there's so many players that uh, ask the lines first if they're sure about the, uh, the call or even get sort of angry, Martina Hingis style. They don't last long in badminton. Arby goes down the line into the net, and as you mentioned yesterday, badminton differing from other racket sports, the chair umpire cannot overrule the line judge on a line call. Taufik changes shuttles, trailing 1-2. Careless shot played by the 27-year-old Arby. You mentioned the fact that Arby, difficult to get his way into international tournaments, forced to play trials. He had to do that for the Konica Cup. Got through that. Got some big wins here earlier in the tournament for Fung Pramati, Ong Yu Hawk, the Malaysian. 
been a very good tournament for Arby. Fung and uh, Ong Yu Hock and, and Hendra won the defending champion. I mean, that's three excellent wins in a row. Arby having some difficulty with the net. He sent several shots below the tape. Service fought call against Tarfik. The service goes there is to make sure the very strict rules of the technical rules of service motion are applied. Arby rushing that shot, Brian. Seven-year-old is a little wild starting it off here in the first game. Oh, Taufik going to the floor. No play on that. Perfectly placed by the Indonesian veteran. Well, Arby's going to have to hit that sort of quality of smash. As Peter Gaeta found out yesterday, Taufik's defense is so solid that it's going to take an exceptional shot to get past it. And there, Arby tested the backhand oh, twice before wow. going cross court. He's back within one. Even though Tafik put the shuttle in the net, he was there to make the shot plenty of time. While he was there, again, a couple of simple mistakes. the backhand again. Arby down the flank. Now leads 6-5 after trailing by two. That's the strength of Arby. The jump smashes. That just misses. His jump smashes have earned him the nickname Jumping Jack Flash. Jack Flash goes into the net on that jump smash. Isn't it jumping Jack Flash, it's a smash? Isn't that the line? Yes, I think you're right, Brian. There yes, we are, so yeah. highly yeah. appropriate. I missed Gone with the Wind, but I caught that one. You did well. Oh, and Taufik just misses over to the far side. Seven, six. But he had the right idea. Arby did not have the backhand side of the court covered. And he waves at that one. A couple of times now, Taufik has managed to hit the shuttle across court. With just a flick of the wrist at the last minute. Watch him here. There, it looked as though he was going to go down the line, didn't it? The last minute. and hurrying that shot sent it outside the entire court onto the blue well the key for Tarfik was that he played that drop shot the net and then came in to cover it and the backhand at the net pinning Arby deep the entire rally. But again set up by the forehand little clip cross court there and then he was able to come in flick it off. Not an easy kill but he made it look simple. Nine. Now a two point lead for the 18 year old. His backhand is getting crisper and crisper as this first game progresses.
goalkeeper placement on the forehand smash. He's on a big roll here now, four points away from a one-game lead. And that's on the line. Tarfik pointing over to the spot on the forehand side where he thought Arby was going to hit it. But this is what Arby does, and does well. Net cord. Hurt Taufik on that rally. But it was a good net shot from Arby. So making the clear, he had to, it was difficult to keep it away from the net, in fact. Lots of smashes here in these first in this first game. These two guys forming little white clouds of smoke in the far corners. Arby breathing fairly heavily and I'm looking down at Taufik and uh, he is just as uh, cool and relaxed as can be. He's not breathing heavily at all. I don't think he's even perspiring. We were particularly impressed by his stamina against Peter Gator yesterday in three exhausting games. Backhand at the net, no problem for Arby. Look at the wrist. You know, it's the same sort of mental approach to the game that uh, Bjorn Borg used to have in his heyday that uh, used to be so destructive to his opponents. You know, he never responded angrily to a call or a mistake. Uh, he always, he very rarely you saw him breathing heavily. So the opponent just thought, well, if it goes the distance, he's not going to tire. He's not going to get angry. He's not going to get, uh, you know, distracted. calmly played by Arby. You could see he was trying to find a hole in defense of Taupik. There just wasn't one. No, superior footwork by Taupik. He got finally the chance to smash. So you're not going to hit the line every single time. was trying to avoid allowing Arby to gain the forehand smash, but that's exactly what happened, and Arby took it down the flank for a winner. He's got the serve back trailing by two. Still very tight this first game. If you want to compare yesterday's match with today's topic against Peter Gator, I mean, Peter Gator won the first game fairly comfortably after a slow start, but it was by movement pushing Tarfik around. Very rarely did he was he able to just hit outright winners, which is the talent that uh, former world champion here has. So it's a slightly different game. But it's interesting that they haven't played each other before, but uh, they will have seen each other in close range enough to know the game. Arby gets a point back now within one of a tie at 10-11. That backhand right into the chest of Arby. He had no play on it. Taufik leads 11-10 with the serve. Arby out touching Taufik at the net there. The shuttle was tumbling, you know, I've mentioned it a couple of times this broadcast already. So, Taufik had to let it go until it stopped 
moving, spinning. By that time, it was too late. It was almost about knee height. Badly played by Arby. Lifting that long and wide. Oh, that's much better. Yes. Started with a very good return of serve. Very crafty shot. Just dropped it short, then he got the high clear. So that's the key for him. If he, if he can get a good net shot, he's going to get the lift 11, from the uh, Taufik. And if the lift's not perfect, then he's going to have a chance to use that smash. Taufik smartly in the middle of a high speed rally lets that go a couple of times he froze Arby 27 year old not sure where that shuttle was going to go well he turned tables on uh, Arby by playing a series of drop shots so that it was Arby that had to lift and a smash to the backhand side Barbie and he's two points away now claiming game one we still haven't seen him breathe heavily Close encounter there, eyeball to eyeball across the net, very fast stuff, quick reflexes from Taufik, but uh, Arby was thinking all the time, just trying to sort of prise open the uh, defences of his opponent. That's where he's had the best luck with the smash to the backhand cross court against Taufik. So Arby struggling, but still just down by one serve into the net. Taufik now has missed to both sides on the deep shot. That's called in, so we are tied at 13. And again, he accepts the call without question, without reaction. He looks around. Yeah. <laughs> Back at the live action, Taufik smashes down a shot left high and fat, so he gets the serve back, tied at 13. slams the racket down in frustration. Well, that's the first show of emotion from the youngster that we've seen. And he didn't like the way that he just fed the strength of Arby there. That's why they call him Jumping Jack Flash. Perfect example. Arby will change shuttles. Yesterday, Taufik played a tight game one, eventually losing it 17-14 to Peter Gator. Good presence of mind to let that go. See how he plays just a fraction closer to the net than uh, Arby in those close exchanges. He's always trying to get that uh, bit of an edge.
didn't quite get the lift off the backhand. Taufik playing a series of low shots. He has a game point. Again, brilliant footwork from the youngster. Big smash and the uh, split stride as he lands, ready to move again. Game point. Dropping in, I think Taufik just hoping there that would drop wide. There's a fraction of a drift, this uh, back corner, that just helps it put the brake on, and that was quite a way in. Brilliantly played by Taufik. First setting up RB with a low drop shot and then getting him back with the smash to the forehand. Yeah, the youngster using uh, the, the limited experience he has to say, right, okay, let's uh, get off, a bit of a towel down, drink of water, because now he's going to try and serve it out again. Remarkable poise for an 18-year-old. A lot of youngsters would have packed it in after losing the first game against Peter Gator. Not so Taufik Hidayat. Game point number two. Misses the line, and Taufik has taken game one, 15-13. Not easy for the 18-year-old, and Arby, a former Konica Cup champion, has run into an 18-year-old with lots of stamina, power to both sides. Taufik Hidayat takes game one. We'll have game two when we return live to the Singapore Indoor Stadium. He's now looking to defeat Arby in the first time they have met in international competition. More smashes from Taufik. That's finally what got him through the game. Along with excellent retrieval skills. That drifts outside the line. So Arby here, trailing love one. And that goes in. So the players again fooled by the draft on the left side. Yeah, but I think there Arby was fooled by the uh, change of direction. Uh, just changing the angle of the, the wrist at the last minute on that shot. That was hit with a huge amount of venom. Unfortunately, just a fraction wide. See again, another sign of a, a deep breath. A hint of exertion. Arby hitting some wild shots that really hurt him in game one. There's another one. The thing, I mean, his game is to go for those big smashes. They're not all going to go in. One off. Good job, Arby. He was out of position and still managed to make a good shot on the return. And it looked as though Tarpik was a little bit too complacent. And he was in control of that rally till he put it in the net. There Tarpik goes into the net, but early in the second game, he's not giving Arby much to smash with. Traffic just seems to have uh, taken a couple of notches off his uh, off his game. Well, that was actually well played by Arby, but uh, 
Tarvik seemed to just, just sort of relax a little bit. So what he's done the, the, the good thing is he's got the first game. A big run now for Arby, jumping out in front by four at 5-1. Tumble shot, just misses. Again, I think you'll see Tarfik just come into shot there. He was right on top of that. You can hear Tarfik put the brakes on. Coming into the net. It's actually quite uh, worrying there when you go in. You know, rubber on rubber, you can easily uh, twist your ankle Sam is the Achilles. Uh, knees and ankles really take a pounding in badminton. I'm surprised there are not more ankle injuries. Harvey tried to take that wide to the backhand side against Taufik. He serves, trailing by five. direction. I, along with everyone else, thought that was going down the line. But the key there was he got uh, underneath the shuttle in position very early. Brilliant footwork once again. And then had the spring in the legs to get up early and he had the choice. Did he hit the, uh, the hard smash or the fake? Body of Taufik. Big time jump smash from Arby on that one. Really elevating. Yeah, and a change of direction as well. He's, his favorite is the inside out smash over to the other side. This one drank the uh, racket across the back of the shuttle and uh, cut it down. See, not quite as uh, fast, which enabled it to actually go in the court on the uh, shortest path straight uh, down the court. Arby resumes serve, leading by four, trailing one game to none. Right on top of the net, Taufik trying to drop one over right in front of Arby, and the 27-year-old would have none of it. Drop followed up by a drop. Great response from Taufik. Perfect trajectory on that one. You're coming from left to right. Tough for Arby. You've almost got to be on the top of the net as he was a couple of uh, rallies ago to be able to deal with it. Arby sends one into the net. Arby has hit a lot of half-hearted shots, if you will, into the net meek responses. Mm. Arby left that much too late. The topic closes to within two at 5-7.
just inside the tee. Wonderful placement from Arby on that. Pushing it deep to the forehand side. Closure coming into the net off the cross court smash. Yeah, I think everyone was expecting the big smash from Taufik, and he went twice in a row with the uh, the off speed hit, but then followed in the second one to be able to finish it off. It's very interesting, you know. He's he hasn't got any obvious strength. He's got no obvious weakness either. It's just an all round game that has got to. Uh, got to get better. So he's only two weeks into his 18th year. Or 19th year. Being 18. Let's get checked. In. There, Taufik gets powerful going to the forehand side. Arby guarding the line a little too closely. So Taufik capitalizes and closes to within one in the process. That drops in. Remember, Arby had a 7-3 lead. That's gone now. We're level at 7. Left too high. Traffic looked round to see whether the racket had gone over, and actually, looking at that camera angle, it looked as though he had. Agreed. Their umpire was uh, checking his score. moving around Arby with ease. The great thing is to be able to follow up your shots. He knew that that should have been a winner anyway. Arby did extremely well on the forehand side. Then getting that it was a great bit of recovery work. But Tafik had got himself into position to finish it off. Made a piece, second game. A big run by Taufik. 6-2 over the last eight points. The lead 9-8. over 8-9. Harvey couldn't get that over the net. I think they're enjoying this little net battle. You know, you think men's badminton is all about uh, big smashes and whatever. I think that's just a tough shot. That gets over his head and goes long. Well left. Oh. And Arby goes long down the line. Oh. Taufik asks to towel off. Gives a chance to tell you about prize money. $12,000 for the winner of the men's singles final here. Finishing second. 
get to six thousand dollars us the two losing semi-finalists that's a tender one and peter gator will each take home three thousand dollars us tronica cup one of the more lucrative stops the entire badminton tour worldwide Huge smash. Topic showing he can elevate almost as well as Arby. Take a look at this. What clearance off the back of the court from the 18-year-old. So after trailing 7-3, he now leads 10-9. Really hitting the lines here against the former world champion. As I say that, Arby gets the net cord, earn the serve back. And he goes quickly to the backhand side of Taufik. We're level at 10. too high, but there's more of that net play you were talking about. You see Taufik coming in, trying to cut off the angles, so Arby's still very quick. Uh, I'm sure Arby had that point one. Well, three or four absolutely world-class shots in that rally. That one there was brilliant. And then the reply by Taufik was just as good. Perfect trajectory on that one. And again, with a lunge and a slight slip of the front foot. Really is uh, high-class stuff. The way Taufik keeps himself in each and every point is truly amazing. Retrieval skills, non for real here in the Konica Cup. Harvey goes back to work on the line on the backhand side. admiring his own handiwork with the cross-court smash. Arby picked that one out as soon as uh, his opponent went up in the air. You see it, I mean, it looked spectacular, and it was. You think, how the heck did he get it back? But he anticipated the shuffle. On the live action, Taufik pushes one wide. And a back and forth game two, Arby leads 13-10. And now a game point. Taufik forced to rush to the back of the court. And that net court will get over. And game two goes to the former world champion and former Konica Cup champion. And just as we had in the ladies singles we are going to go to a game three rb takes it 15 10 and we'll have that game three for you when we return to the singapore indoor stadium live coverage of the konica cup 1999 continues one left going into the net back and dropping in rare that that would fall for a winner well that's the shot of the day look at that oh, goodness me well they're saying that uh, he could possibly be the best player since Rudy Hartono that was uh, a Rudy Hartono special
dropping long, so we're tied at one. There, Arby gets it over, sending it into the body of Taupik. Alpic's been the more spectacular of the two. Arby, though, the steady hand. More of it there. Good anticipation by Arby. Going across the net very quickly, getting there in time to be able to play the flick over his opponent's head. Three, one. Remember the last time RB won an international tournament, it was right here at the indoor stadium two years ago. Really covering that net well against the 18-year-old. Back to the live action. Balls. Arby obviously not expecting that. Arby just waves at that one. Telegraph the drop shot. Better looking smash from Arby there. It's an explosive stroke. He's so quickly back under it. And that on the line. Arby didn't make a play on it. Not sure if he was thinking that would go long, or rather he just couldn't get there. If traffic starts to feed Arby, he's going to find uh, himself on the floor once or twice too often. He's got to keep his concentration. Remember, that's not the place to put it to him. Well, at least the fact that he's wiping his face might must mean that he's uh, perspiring, so that's something. But our breathe watch continues. Still no. haven't seen the heavy breathing. Not the first sign of a breath. <coughs> I presume he does breathe. just out driving Taufik. Nothing fancy about that rally. You get to this point of the third game, you think, right, the experience of uh, former world champion, twice all England champion, and all that experience can start coming into play. And there Taufik misses badly wide, perhaps a shade too aggressive on that as Arby doubles up 6-3 question of knowing when to go for the winners and when to play safe you know and as it gets tighter towards the end just make sure you stay very tight anticipating a down the line there or even perhaps a net shot and the last time that 
Taufik was able to play those sort of shots was right at the beginning of the third game where he played a couple of cross-court flicks for clean winners. It's almost a, it's been a forgotten stroke since then. Net cord. Taufik though, stretching out for each and every shot. Goes to the floor hard. As Arby gets the serve back. Full stretch. And he has left small imprint of perspiration on the court. I guess from his hand. And certainly nothing from the rest of it. thing is, Arby won't mind putting in the extra effort, breathing heavily, perspiring, and all the rest of it if he continues to hit winners. As long as he's got enough uh, fuel in the tanks to finish the race, that's all that matters. That ball's inside the line, so Taufik gets it back, but he's seen the gap widen. He trails by four. dying over the net. Well, for all his reputation as a uh, powerful smatcher, which is obviously justly deserved, you've got to add his ability at the net. shot was going to go into the last possible second. The danger for Taufik is that he, he just tries to sit back and uh, play in a defensive mode. Not uh, all that wise to do against Arby. If you can, you have to try and attack. And he played that rally just about as well as he could have done. So not bad retrieval from Taufik to get the first shot. Arby finishes it off with a clean smash. And we're stuck on 7-3. Powerful and an explosive shot once again. It, it, it's the smash of a, a smaller player. You know, we, we saw in the doubles yesterday, for example, the, uh, the two big uh, English guys, Simon Archer and Nathan Robertson. They couldn't smash like that. It's too much of a sort of a heavy muscle. You know, they can hit it with power, but it's not a an explosive sort of stroke. You almost need to be this sort of uh, physique to be able to hit it. And you touched on a good point before when you said it's a question of when to use the smash also. And there are Taufik and plays it judiciously to get the serve back. Taufik should have had that point because Arby sat on in the backcourt and left it high and fat. Not one of his better shots. Right on top of the serve from Arby. Even if that had cleared the net, it would have gone wide. So Taufik picks up a point. Finally moved the scoreboard away from 3-7. 4-7 now. <laughs> that was, it was an RB-esque kind of smash. Yeah, he needs a couple of quick points, I think. And that comes at a very timely moment. As, uh, both these players went three games yesterday. Taufik uh, winning 15-10 against the uh, former world number one, Peter Gader. And uh, Arby 
winning 15-10 in the third against defending champion. That's four straight points now from Taufik. As he levels this third game at seven all. Just what Taufik wanted. He, he threw it up there. He, he went with a high serve, going to Arby's strength. And uh, Arby almost not expecting to be given that. So he makes a mistake. He's made another mistake there. And uh, Arby, the one that's supposed to have the experience to be able to tighten things up, has got very loose going for uh, a couple of winners that went astray. So they change and halfway through this third game so that uh, there's no undue advantage one end or the other uh, to continue this third game. Traffic 8-7 up. Tafi Kadaya, Sea Games champion. Now looking to become the Conica Cup champion. <laughs> Retrieval of the drop shot just too high, giving Topic time to get into the net. And then he played the fake shot, so though it was going to go to the backhand side, and then he just angled the racket away. When you see it from the side, there's no way of telling which direction it's going to go. From this angle, you see the deception. Ow! Wild serve. And again, going with a high serve, trying to put it over Arby's uh, left shoulder. over. Arby taking no chances. He waited on a couple of shots late before playing them. Taufik asks. Towel off. Over the last year, Taufik had diet. Gained revenge on a couple of big names in Babington. First beating Dong Jiang, the 98 Brunei Open after previous losses to him. And then yesterday, Peter Gator, who had beaten him three straight times, going down in three games. Taufik had left that return high, and Arby couldn't do anything with it. There you see Taufik badly out of position. So a good three-point cushion now, the Indonesian youngster. That's a better effort from Arby. He needs to get the serve back and get some quick points going here. All the momentum with the 18-year-old. Stranded there with the three-quarter distance. It's caught an Arby with the, the jump smash there. Too, too much of an angle for him. From there, you'd expect the former world champion to be able to hit the floor. Arby goes from corner to corner. First great retrieval from Taufik on the far forehand side and then able to go upstairs and smash a winner. Arby knew it was coming that side, but it was hit with such power that he really couldn't control the defensive shot. 
Arby really working on the flanks of the court now. He's got the serve back. 8-10 this third game. Now 9-10. Talpik sends it into the net. And square at 10 all. Talpik goes wide. breather because that was a, a good response from uh, Arby after conceding six points in a row to go from 7-4 up to 7-10 down. All just long. Arby with the good eye. That misses. Now 11-10. So plenty of ebb and flow in this game three. Two-point lead. Well, that was a savage smash from Taufik. Fraction wide. Oh, you can see Arby put up the left fist. He ruse that shot into the net. Taufik changes shuttles. Arby forcing Taufik very deep to retrieve those shots. Good whip on the backhand. Yeah, he's demonstrated uh, great control over that shot in his final. Wasn't much in evidence yesterday in the match against Peter Gaeta. It just shows you he's got uh, pretty well the full arsenal. That's on the line. Good aggressive play from Arby there. second time in frustration. Well, I'm not sure, to be perfectly honest, what the rules on racket abuse are. If he breaks the racket, I think like in tennis, he gets a code violation. So, uh, two rare demonstrations of emotion from the youngster as it just starts to slip away. Harvey there looking back at the fans. He realized he should have played that shot. the fist up and he can smell it now at 13 10. well whatever happens in this final i mean arby having announced that he wouldn't uh, mind moving here on a permanent basis uh, it'd be great for him to win only his third tournament this year but uh Taufik's already done I think more than uh, anyone expecting. He's had a couple of great wins. He's got to the final of a four-star and five-star event. And now, a chance.
championship point for Herianto Arby, looking for his second Konica Cup title. Taufik not done yet. Snapping that cross-court smash for a winner. Meek return, dies at the net. Championship point once again. That's in. Inside the line. Arby didn't have a play on it anyway. He's made a lot of mistakes on that shot, pushing it too long three or four times in this game. That's great play from Taufik. Here you are down 10-4 facing match point. You still are able to lay off those shots. That was only maybe a centimeter wide. And once again, he goes to the high serve supposedly to the strength of uh, Arby just to, to give him a test up the unexpected at that time Arby was able to finish off the shot championship point number three still can't finish him off it's funny how the same scenario occurs in many sports like in tennis the hardest game to win is the one when you're serving for the match Arby will have another chance to serve for it as that goes into the net low from Taufik Arby towels off Still doesn't look fatigued, is he? Just looks eager to get on with it. Lots of energy. The change of pace. Herianto Arby has 